Because the media is made up of individuals within a larger set of institutions, there's often a question about whether or not the media is biased and the way in which the media is biased might influence the type of information that's available. And your textbook points out that the first step that people usually think of and point to is the idea that the journalists themselves might be biased, might have some ideological bias or some partisan bias. And if research generally, those who decide to become journalists tend to have more liberal views, more progressive views than the rest of American society, just slightly because now you have to include the number of conservative partisan media that exist and they're, if they're part of the journalist population, their views will also be taken into account. But generally speaking, uh, it is the case that if you do some investigation, you might find that there tends to be more of a liberal bias um, for the journalists themselves. But the textbook is also careful to point out that we have to think about this within a larger institutional framework and that the owners of these media corporations, the editors and the executive editors and the producers of a lot of these newscasts and of these news sources are themselves very well tend to be conservative or at least conservative in some senses of the word, perhaps wanting a, large, a smaller role for government so that the taxes that they pay on their huge salaries is a lot lower. And so it isn't as simplistic as thinking about, okay, there are liberal, bleeding heart liberal reporters who are going to tell us bleeding heart liberal ideas about the world around us. That's one story that's told. It's one that Fox News will often tell. Um, and for other reasons, um, there is a sort of a reason why they might want to do that. But even if you uh, expand out, you have to think about what is, are there ways in which the media might be biased? There might be some bias in the coverage of the stories that we get. There's an important caveat before you even begin on this, is to say that we have to remind ourselves that we ourselves might have some important biases that we bring to the table. The phrase that's often used is where you stand depends on where you sit. Where you are on an ideological spectrum talking about the left and right in politics, um, that if you are to the left on the political spectrum, then you have a certain worldview. And if you come across individuals or institutions or media outlets that are on the right of the political spectrum, then from your perspective, those outlets actually have bias. They are different than what you would want the world to look like. Similarly, if you're on the right of the political spectrum and you come across some newscasts that are more liberal in their approach, then from your perspective, you believe that those newscasts and those individuals are biased because they are more liberal than you would like the world to be. And so we have to recognize that where we are has some influence in terms of how we categorize individuals and institutions. And so as a Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, they're like, oh, hey, long time listener, first time caller, guys. Um, then when you come across the way in which the news is covered by Rachel Maddow, uh, Chris Matthews, and MSNBC, then you think of those as biased. They're very different than the way in which you hide the, the newscasts, the, the Fox News, the uh, Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh personalities. And similarly, if you're used to watching Rachel Maddow or Chris Matthews and MSNBC and you come across the way in which Fox News is talking about the political world, it's a very different worldview. And so from your perspective, you believe that the Fox News is biased and has a conservative bias to it. And so to a large extent, where we are on this is influenced by where we start to have to recognize its influence. And furthermore, if you are a uh, long-time listener, first-time caller, a long-time listener, long-time caller to Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, or Fox News, or uh, conservative talk radio, or things like that, then you might even things find news sources like CNN or USA Today as being ideologically biased. Because again, from your perspective, they are liberal. They are too liberal. And therefore, that their uh, partisan position, their ideological position, is very different than yours. And so we have to recognize that we may not be ourselves objective analysis analysts of um, the, the actual newscasts of what we're watching or, or the other ones that we don't like to watch. Even with that caveat, there is evidence that there is clearly partisan media. The fact that I can use some discussion of MSNBC 
Rachel Maddow, Chris Matthews, folks like that, is indication of uh, a media that tends to be left of the political side. Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh, and you can talk about Fox News and saying that that is to the right of the political spectrum and exactly where you come as a team. There are people who study this in journalism and sociology and political science who can try to come up with measures of those things. But the fact that we can talk about them suggests that there is, in fact, an existence of kind of um, media. And what we also find is that it's not necessarily ideologically based, but it can also be tied to a particular political party. And part of the reason we have this is, as we're going to be talking about a little bit later when we talk about political parties and campaigns and elections, is that the world is easily political system into two and only two camps. We have two and only two viable political parties in our political system, and they have a vested interest in arguing that the Democrats have the right answer for absolutely everything and the Republicans have the wrong answer for everything if you're a Democrat, or vice versa. If you're a Republican, Republicans have the right answer for everything, and the Democrats have no answers for anything. And then if you have a media that tends to support one political party as opposed to another, you claim a sort of kind of partisan leaning. Um, and so whether or not you call this ideological bias or partisan bias, there does seem to be identifiable news sources that tend to have an ideological position or a partisan position that they play in society. Um, and so that by terms of agenda setting, in terms of what sort of stories they cover, as well as how they cover those, the spin that they put on the coverage of the news. And if you are someone who consumes only one type of news or from one type of news source, then you will get that message. And then going to another source might actually sound a bit strange. And the, the world that's being described is very different than the one you know. Um, but the textbook is also important in an important way that even though it is critically important to the dynamics of the American political system right now, the rise of partisan media, is that there are other forms of bias that ex exist in the media that have perhaps an even greater influence in terms of the overall type of media that we get in our society. Um, the first is that they talk about throughout the textbook is the dependence on official sources um, that the most of the media, 70 to 90 percent of the stories that are published in the New York Times or the Washington Post come from stories and, and information that's provided by government officials. And that has an influence in terms of that the uh, officials themselves have a role to play in terms of how that story is framed. Um, it's relied on press conferences, press releases, interviews with government officials. It's the way in which the outset. Um, another important source of bias is the coverage of elections tends to be as we're um, leading into the 2020 election, you'll see the horse race coverage of an election, the idea of who is at a primary, who is behind, what sort of gaffe, what sort of mistake has been made by a candidate, and what sort of influence that has on their position. That has, uh, in terms of wanting to talk about poll results and what those poll results mean and things like that, even though they put in the caveats that poll results aren't perfect, that the decisions that are made actually in election time are very different than when you would say now several months out from the election. The ideas that um, public opinion polls don't always tap the way in which people think about the issues that are being discussed or not being discussed, as the case may be. But that horse race coverage of campaigns and elections make it seem more like a game, make it seem like you have one team that you're rooting for rather than another, as opposed to a set of interesting policy positions that may be conflicting with one another, but ideas about what sort of steps we should take going forward. The textbook also points out that there is often a nationalistic spin to most of the news that we get. It ignores the rest of the world. The ways in which um, the, the coverage of particularly international news is A, not very often, and B, when it is, it's usually talked about in terms of what impact it has on the United States, and particularly because when it's done on local TV news, which is still the source that most people use to find out about the political world around them, is to talk about what implications that might have for their local community. And that's the lens through which any international story is being told. Um, and the other is, is that a lot of this news tends to favor capitalism, support for the free market, um, the fundamental challenges to the economic system is not something that we see on most uh, news that is covered um, in the United States. And so even though it's important to recognize that there is a source of partisan bias that we can see in some forms of the media, uh, at the same time, there are also other forms of bias that can come out that we can often forget because we'll emphasize perhaps too much this ideological bias that's going on.